Hello everyone, it's me, Matsmus. Thank you for joining me. In this video, it is a backdated interview with Military Kit Review, a YouTube channel owned and organized by Smudge, a infantry sergeant in the British Army serving in the specialized infantry. Absolute legend, had an absolute blast with him in this interview. Make sure you check out his channel and enjoy. I love the tag. Ali just saves lives. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> love it. Hello all. Welcome to Military Kit Review. Today I'm joined with uh, Maximus. Uh, clearly it's totally different, uh, especially from uh, the fact that I normally get people on sitting next to me. But do you know what? For the stream, we'll, we'll bring a chair and we'll say, that, uh, we'll say that he's here now. Uh, yes. Good old squad yeah, banter there. Match it. Uh, no <laughs> um, it's great to have you on, Maximus. I mean, it's been a while since I've been trying to get you on, mate, for sure. No, it's been awesome, mate. I know we've been back and forth trying to get time, and uh, I've been watching your channel for a while. It's absolutely fucking standing. Love it. Uh, so yeah, it's good to be on here. Good to be on here. Thank you very much. Um, and 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 also, actually, from the, from the point of view that somebody's like, have, have you seen Maximus? I'm thinking, you know, I was I was keeping it quite low, but no, I haven't. I'll go and check out. Maximus <laughs> then says hello uh, via his discreet messaging that he normally does. <laughs> Had a look, and the the type of the type of things that you do, mate, is fantastic and totally different in its own right. Um, I was talking a little bit before, guys, to Maximus about um, about him basically doing a review of uh, specialised infantry. I think that would be massively good. Um, yep. I don't know if any of you that are watching would uh, would be interested in that. I know I would be bloody interested in that, and I'm in yeah. uh, specialised infantry. Yeah, definitely. No, and I, I know you said you're gonna, you can share me the info, and that's gonna be perfect. Like I know for a fact that my channel would sap that up. And I always, like I said to you, in terms of subject matter expert, infantry wise, it's not my my core, right? I'm an artillery guy now. Previously, Remy, it's definitely not something I'm gonna be like. Yeah, I know tons about because I don't lie to people. If I if I try and find info, I'm gonna try and find good sources, and you're gonna be like the perfect source for that yeah. that content. So, and I want to showcase what you do because shit. First of all. You're a British brother, so I've got to do it. Yes. And second of all, I, I don't feel like both my military and the British Army get enough showcasing on the on YouTube. And I actually, interestingly enough, without detaching away from what we're talking about, I had a conversation with someone called Kyle Gott, who is an American YouTuber. He's a pretty big one. He's got about 163,000 subs. I had a chat with him last night. He was live streaming, and he did a competition in 2018. It was the best military YouTubers of 2018. Okay. And... And I asked him on the stream last night, I said, Kyle, why is it that you didn't ask any other YouTubers around the world, Canadian, Brits, you know, Australians, because they're, they're out there and yeah. they're not hard to find. Why didn't you, you know, involve them in this? And all I see in your competition, and they had about 50 or 60 YouTubers, yeah. is Americans, like Americans, Americans. And it wasn't like an attack. It was just like, I'm just curious, like... You know, we're, we're NATO countries. We're all here together to, to do what we do as militaries. Yeah. It would be nice if maybe you kind of involved the rest of the YouTube community. And uh, it's nice to get along with, you know, other YouTubers that have the same mentality. And I'm sure he did too. And he, he explained, you know, well, it's primarily focused for the Americans. But my core focus for my channel is to try and break that wall down, right? Like getting along with people online, veterans together is how it should be. Not I'm American. You're British, I'm Canadian, you're Australian. We should all be in the same boat, yeah. you know? I, I, and do you know, I, I'm going to elaborate on that. Um, I think what you're saying there is bang on right. And mm. I think if you can imagine having a, and I'll put it out there, having a squaddy cast, uh, but call it a country cast. So you've got exactly. somebody from Canada, yourself, somebody yeah. from America, somebody from Germany, I mean, yeah. whatever. And it's just a difference of... I don't know, you know, banter and, you know, well, you know, the Yanks blue on blue and, you, you know, whatever you want to go down. Do you, 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 exactly. you obviously get what I'm saying. I totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah. So what did, he, what, what did he come back from? What did he say in the end? What, what's... It it was really awkward, and if you, if any of you want to check it out, you can actually go to his channel. He's a good YouTuber. He's a really nice guy. Fantastic. He's a veteran Air Force guy. And uh, his response, first of all, he was kind of just ignoring the question. I'm like, oh. Okay, well, whatever. Maybe he's just not seen it, so I poised it a couple more times. So there was my first kind of red flag, and then eventually, his his, his I guess his, his wife or his girlfriend came on, and she was very defensive over him. Said, "Well, he just did it because that's what he did it for." And I'm not too sure. Maybe they got their feathers ruffled because that's yeah. they thought I was being a, a, like abrasive to them. Well, I wasn't. 
his, his, and their response was basically, you know, it was primarily focused for American YouTubers and that's what I wanted to do because it's my channel and, yeah. you know, people don't get to tell me what to do. And I was like, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to get the wrong page here. I'm, I don't want to make out like I'm attacking. It was just a question, right? Well, and then that was his prerogative. You know, I'm not going to give him a hard time for it. But I tried saying to him, you know, maybe next time you could, you know, invite other people and, you know, I'd, I'd be able to find people who could help you, yourself included, right? It'd be yeah. brilliant to have, you know, British infantrymen on chat and to, you know, American YouTubers are making this community. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think he was buying it. But yeah, whatever. I, I, yeah, I think I think what you've said there is, is bang on, really. I might send him a message, mate. The more people that send him yeah. a message, maybe you think, do you know what? But yeah, I totally get, I get what you're saying. But you're doing yeah. well. I mean, you, I mean, I know you've had issues in terms of your uh, demonetization and that. And guys, yeah. for people out there that don't know him, Maximus, I'm sure you do. He's been doing this for a bloody long time. Um, close to 200,000 subscribers, mate. I mean, you're absolutely smashing it, mate. Yeah, it's going okay. Um, you know, I, I won't lie. I've put a lot of time and effort into YouTube. YouTube is not something you jump into and think, tomorrow I'm gonna do YouTube yeah. and I'm gonna make 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It doesn't work like that. You know, 90% of it is luck. My prerogative and, and the same for you is it's, we're not here to make money. We're here to inform, educate, talk to people and make a community. And that was kind of my main role and focus. Um, the demonetization is tough because you know, it does take time away from my kids, my family yeah. and in life time is money. Yeah. However, I keep making content because I have a great following and I, I see when I watch your videos is the exact same thing. You've got people who are asking you genuine questions, giving you genuine good feedback. You know, yeah. Smudge, I love the fact that you're able to give me this input because now I can make a, a solid informed decision on what I want to do next. Or, you know, Smudge, thank you for letting me know this so I'm prepared for basic or prepared yeah. for this. That's what I want to see more of for me and my channel going forward for the Canadian military side. It's just very tough. You know, there's a lot of we have this discussion, a lot of intricacies about what we can and cannot talk about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the channel's going good. Um, it, it, it's definitely hit a dry spell, and I think that's you know something that YouTube's doing to itself, and that's many channels. But I can I, I can tell you this, mate. The way you're going, you're going to fly up there. Um, it, it's not going to be long. I, this, I said the same thing for names, Nico. I said the same thing for many people. Zero Foxtrot, Drakey. Um, you know, there's a lot of British YouTubers, military YouTubers that are starting to come up too, which yeah. is good. And that's what I want to see more of. I think most of my success is purely luck. It is pure luck. It, 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 it is. YouTube I mean, is, is a luck of the draw most of the time. I, I get what you say in that sense, but I disagree because of the content that I've seen, mate. I mean, like I said to you earlier on, the editing that I've seen via your via what you do is bang on mate um, oh, thanks it, buddy it's, it's one of the, the you know one of the best editings that i've seen out there and the rest of it i'd, I'd probably look at some mm, i think somebody's paid to get editing done there uh, <laughs> yeah, do, do yeah, you know yeah. what i mean so yeah, yeah you know um for a man who works and then clearly dedicates the time that he does in the editing i mean mate i'm, I'm like a bloody rock mate trying to bloody edit <laughs> sometimes it takes me half a day but you yeah. know, there you go so yeah the editing that you do is bang on. It's it's Thanks interesting for. that you speak at the start and you say about, you know, ultimately you do this for people. I go back into this sense, guys, that you know that that that's that's I mean, that that says the type of guy he is that he, he does this for people. Um, and and this is what we do. This is the, in terms of the sense that we want to do and looking after the people that are out there. Um, mm -hmm. Today we're going to be talking. About everything and anything, really. It's not yeah. anything specifically. I know somebody said, uh, guys, I'm at Harrogate. Any tips off the both of you? Well, we've both been to Harrogate. Um, yes, actually. we have. What year did you go to Harrogate? I was in Harrogate in 2003. Okay, I think we may have been in Harrogate together, you know. Really? I think so, yeah. So What I, company were you? I was Peninsula 14 platoon. I was Peninsula as well, 16 platoon. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I feel like a little girl. And... Uh, <laughs> And I, I was there the second intake. The regimental sergeant major from the from from Harrogate was a, was the first female. Hmm. I don't. Then, my my memory is terrible, mate, for stuff like that. I can't remember honestly. No. Oh, I can't remember. Okay, I'll put this to you then. So somebody put out a rumor to say that spearmint rhinos. Um, had AIDS in, and everybody the following day was lined up next to the uh, med centre. Do you remember that? I was don't, mate. I don't. Maybe, maybe I do. 
I, my my honestly, and the, this is the hardest part, and I have problems with this all the time. Is my memory going back? Yeah. Like years and years, it, I struggle. I don't know what it is. Probably all the freaking rounds going off by the side of me with the guns, yeah. with the artillery. But I don't know, mate. But uh, so I don't was, remember that story. That's, that were was, you there when the guy tried escaping with the mattress over the over the over the perimeter fence? Ooh, I don't remember that actually. No. He he got put in the glass house and he went for scoff. So yeah. They sent him to scoff. They had the RP march him down there for scoff because he was he was going to get booted out. They were just waiting for his papers to transfer him out the, out of the camp. Yeah. And he wanted to go home. He was fighting them to the death, right? So they marched him back, and on the way back, I guess he, he'd already pre-got someone to hide him a mattress somewhere, sprinted it away from the RP staff. RP staff couldn't catch him because they're RP staff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he found this mattress, threw it over the fence, and clambered over the freaking fence. I, got out. Yeah, I might, I'm, I think I might have heard this. Um, I'm just trying to think. I'm just trying to think of a point that we both know that we were there at Harrogate together. But it was a second intake of the new college. Second intake. It, so we were the. I s don't know. So you. Maybe it was 2004. I was in. I'm pretty sure. No, it was 2003. I don't have any clear memory of the specific instances. All I remember is just getting beasted for a year. Oh, yeah, I mean, but I'm trying to help this guy out without us bloody having a little high-five moment here to say that we're yeah, at the yeah. same time. Did, yeah, yeah. Um, did you enjoy Arrogate? I loved it, mate. It was uh, eye-opening. As a young adult, because you are, if you're, if you're willing to join the military, you're, an, you're, you're a young adult. You, you're, you've made a commitment to be an adult. You open so many doors. Leadership, teamwork, integrity, yeah. trust, honesty, Tons of stuff. I, I loved every second of it. The opportunities you get, you're not going to get anywhere else, maybe Welbeck, um, if you want to go officer side, yeah. to get that kind of stuff, you know? That's my perspective. It instilled so many things on me. Um, you know, you know, you go. it's easy to be able to shake a stick at the core values and the yeah. service test. But from, from, the, from the boy that I was, an absolute idiot, um, to the man that I am today... I can only thank the British Army for that because of Agreed. you know the type of training that I've done and I've been through and and I mean that twelve months looking back at it now felt like like it was a day but at the time it was like bloody hell how like you know it's like two months in it's like I've got ten months left you know exactly um, yeah it went quick in its own right I mean the times yeah. that it was slow was like you know um, was like the first exercise yeah do you remember um, battle camp. Yes, I remember the battle camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, exactly. Um, yeah. You know, so it, yeah, I mean, it was fantastic. Did you go on to the, did you go to France on the battlefield tour? Yes, we did. We did the whole battlefield tour. That was amazing. And free, right? Totally free. Well, that, that, yeah. and, and I keep saying this to people, you know, you take your own spending money, obviously, but the fact that yeah. you've got three square meals a day paid for by the military in exactly. a foreign country, granted it wasn't great having a continental breakfast every morning, but, you know, <laughs> I mean, uh, it's yeah. free. But for the fact of what I did, the history that, you know, enriches us to this day of what we talk about for the values and standards of our you know forebearers and that was exactly. was something you know it was, yeah it was fantastic and just seeing you know everything especially the battlefield tour in terms of where people came on the beach what was built mm. uh, you know i've never been one for history mate but it was it was definitely something that i enjoyed yeah i agree and with, you're with the boys too right so i think when, when do we go on that's normally later on it's like the nine month ten month point somewhere around there yeah a little later yeah. on or maybe at the end of summer so you, you you've got a good bond with the boys you know got a platoon of how many is there 24 in that in in the yeah I mean, 24? At, at the start there was bloody loads wasn't there i mean I'm, I'm sure oh no it'd be 48 four sections yeah, four we're sections pop, right we're pop yeah. up there it was about four sections wasn't there yeah. towards the end yeah. it, it ventured down into three yeah yeah but you, you know you're with the boys and you get to go to you know to France, which some people have never even been away from the UK before. Yeah. You're with a bunch of the fellas that you've been working with for nine months. No better bonding experience to go and see true military history. And like, yeah. I'm not a huge military buff myself. You know, my channel sometimes portrays that I am, but I'm not. I don't know all my dates and all these yeah. battles and all this history. But you walk around, you don't have to. You're with a bunch of people who you know, and especially during, you know, mine, your careers at the early stages, preparing to go to Afghanistan. We were gonna go to Afghanistan. Yeah. That was yeah. our primary prerogative, right? You know that those people, because multiple different trades, you've got Paris, you've got infantry, you've got tankies, all these different units. At some point, we're all going to go to Afghan. Those people that you kind of go on those battlefield tours with, you're like, shit. Like, I'm on a, I'm on a battlefield that people have 
been killed from my regiments, my corps, my units, and maybe in the next two years, I'm going to be going away with some of these people to another battlefield yeah. and potentially lose my buddies there. So yeah. to me, it was a surreal a surreal thing, but a really cool thing for the for Harrogate to give us, for sure. It was a nice freebie. Yeah, definitely. Um, somebody asked here about, uh, is the food free uh, in phase one and phase two? I mean, when I was there, it was. I still think... It was for me now. too. Uh, I don't yeah. think you pay for it, just because of the fact that it's a training establishment and everything surrounding a training establishment. Um, I don't think it's pay as you dine in a training establishment. I mean, I, I can only relate that to when you go away really on a course. Yeah, exactly. Food, depending on what type of course that it is, uh, and it just becomes the fact that you know it's paid for by the uh, by by the government. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, I love Harrogate. Um, mm -hmm. Looking back on it, I'd go there tomorrow. I think the one thing, if I was going to give somebody any tips and advice about Harrogate, was that truly, I don't feel that I I was as professional then as I am now which always is the sense because at then I was 16 years old 17 right. years old so it's never going to be the case but I, I think I need to listen more I think I need to be more proactive you know have more foresight understand that things truly do happen for a reason you know there's a mm -hmm. reason why the, the the instructor's coming in and he's chucking out everything from my uh, from my bloody um, lockers and all that yeah. stuff um I mean, I don't know what you could, what, what sense of tips and advice you could give in relation to that. Um, yeah, I would, I would agree. You know, 16 is a lot to take on, you know, and, and don't go into it. And I tell everybody who's joining Harrogate because, and I think our generation's a little different and no offense to the newer generation. I think our generation back then is a little different to they are today. We didn't yeah. have iPhones with constant ability to do whatever we wanted. You're going to be locked out from your real world, which is Facebook, texting, your girlfriend, for the good part of two months going into it. And I think that's a that could be a make or break for some people, especially in today's generation. And I, I try my best bit of advice is try your best to wean yourself off of that stuff a little bit before you get in. So, you know, if you're constantly on Facebook and you need that, that update, you need to send pictures of your food and you need to speak to your girlfriend every 10 minutes and blah, 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 wean yourself off. Because that's what I did. You know, me, me, me and my girlfriend, we kind of, take a break a little bit and say, okay, well, you know, I'm not gonna be able to talk to you for two to three months, potentially I'm doing training. I'm going to, you know, calm it down a little bit. It's something I think today's generation need to consider. You're not going to have access to laptops and your phones for a while. You're not going to be able to contact your family for a while, but don't be scared about that. It's a good thing. It's good character building. It helps you. It allows you to learn that, yeah. you know what? I don't need my phone. I don't need my phone. You know, I'm, I'm terrible with my phone yeah. because of YouTube. But that's that's a big bit of advice is start yeah. weaning yourself off the things you think you need that you don't need it, that could make you fail. It's funny you say that because when I joined, yes, phones were about, but it just wasn't as big. Ex yeah. Phones were expensive. You know, it was like the old Nokia 510 or whatever. I can't remember what it's called <laughs> now, but do you, know what I mean? do you know what I mean? I mean, that, yeah. that's the area that you was in. So not nobody really had the phones. So I think it's very difficult um being able to speak about it. And also, I'm not in that position and I know exactly what I'm like with my phone. The first thing right. I think about when I go anywhere is, well, I have internet. Yeah, you, exactly. I mean, that, that is the, that's the age that we're living in. So I totally get where what you're saying in that sense. And, and I can understand from somebody's perspective that a phone is their world. The first yeah. thing I think about when I go anywhere, I've got my phone. Yeah, Roger, happy days. Uh, keys, exactly. I'm jumping in a car. Don't smudge. Don't you need to be thinking about keys first, mate, rather than your phone first? <laughs> oh. I mean, you know, let's... Yeah. So, yeah, um, I totally get that. That's an absolute fair show. Uh, what else we've got here? Smudge may think he's Ali, but until you have seven helmets and hats stacked <laughs> on top of each other, you can't compare to Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go through them, shall we? So we've got the old Mark VI. We've got the Canadian, I can't even remember its name, CG634. We've got a Polish helmet. We've got a Polish hat. We've got a Russian hat. And we've got my, by the way, Ali trimmed. We can't see it. I'm going to have to bring it down. Hold on a sec. <laughs> my Afghanistan Ali trimmed. Because Smudge will know that if you go on tour wearing a hat without it being trimmed, you're going to get laughed at. So you're this is the one thing. You're going to get some stick. Yeah, you're going to get some stick. So the first thing you do when you get to Afghan, you go to the tailor, you say, excuse me, buddy, I'll give you a $10, because $10, that's what you paid with in Afghan, $10 to trim up my alley hat. You know, so yeah, <laughs> that's funny. 
Uh, bang on there, David. Uh, bang on. <laughs> Cut the small talk, get married and love each other. <laughs> this, this is what happens when you put two squaddies together, guys. Um, Smudge provided the mattress. Uh, I, I, didn't, I can't even remember who this guy was, but I probably did. Um, apparently, Welbeck's closing down now. What? Yeah, uh, so Joseph says, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, food is free. Yeah, bro, as far as I was aware, it was. I think it comes out of your wages. Don't quote me on that. That's all I was told by my recruiter. It probably does. I mean, I, you don't get paid anywhere near the amount that you get paid when you get to uh, battalion, just because clearly you recruit. So um, they they elaborate the pay, the fact that when you're paid, you're a soldier, so you're, you're paid as a soldier's pay. So um, they probably do take out your pay, but I know it's about £900 now. Well, it was when I joined, actually. £900 mm -hmm. when you were in, in Harrogate? I can remember that. Can you remember it was going about to that. the bank account first, mate? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Giving do you remember giving your first big big licks? Oh, <laughs> You know what I mean? And then two days later, you were skimp, mate. Oh, exactly. Jesus. That was the first thing I bought, because we got it given in cash first, right? Because they didn't trust us getting it all at once. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so you'd have to march up to your adjutant, and you'd be like, marching, you'd slant your tabs in, they'd be like, Reggie, uh, number. sign, name yeah, rank, sign, rank, 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 rank number, yeah. or whatever you tell them. And they'd be like, you'll get 300 pounds, you have to sign for it here. You'd take your 300 pounds, you'd march, you'd sod off, you'd be like, and as a 16 year old, yeah. back then I was like, holy shit, 300 pounds, now I yeah. can buy, a, well, kind of buy a laptop, right? Yeah. That's the first thing I did. I went out and bought a laptop. Now here's me telling me, or telling these guys, you know, wean yourself off yeah, laptops. Yeah, yeah. The first thing I do is go and buy a laptop, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, that, that was good. How's um, how's Canada, mate? Canada is good, mate. It's it's a good place. Um, I love it. I wouldn't have moved and transitioned here if it wasn't. I think regardless if I hadn't have left the army, I would have come here at some point in my life anyway. Yeah. Um, for me, and most people who know me know why I left, but the main transition is just because of the country. It's a beautiful place to live. The mountains are just on my doorstep. The weather is funky, yeah. to say the least. Um, you know, I get beautiful summers, nice and hot, and then fairly cold winters um, to go snowboarding and skiing. So I get the kind of best of both worlds all over the place. It's nice. It's definitely nice. I mean, as you know, I've been to Canada, so but it's very different from going to Canada and living in Canada. As I'm sure all of you guys that are watching would understand clearly, um, you know, the Dilingo is different in a sense. You've, you know, you're going to one shop and somebody starts speaking French to you, you're like, hey, <laughs> come, come again? Uh, yeah, yeah, do you want to exactly. cross up, mate? No, I'm all right, thanks. <laughs> uh, you know, so it's it, it's different in its own right, isn't it? I mean, I, I, yeah. I'm not going to lie to you, I do love Canada. I love the fact that it's, as you know, f flatter than the back of my head. Um, <laughs> yeah. And... Yeah, I don't like the mosquitoes, but I think we've already mentioned that in the past. The mosquitoes really... Because they don't put pesticides out, do they? Or, or whatever the, they, the fog they the do. fog are. They do. They treat, but it's it, it's really dependent on how much and where they treat it. And okay. if we get heavy winters, like a lot of snowfall, that water just sits there and they can't treat it all. It's just too much, you know? Yeah. Um, and then the eggs form and then we just get a ton of mosquitoes. And, and they're, they're savage. Like, we get West Nile here. West Nile is dangerous. You yeah, know, that, it is. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially yeah. with little ones, you know, little kids and stuff. So it's a little scary, the old mosquitoes sometimes, but it's one of those, you know, things you got to live with to, to get the benefit of the rest of the, the country that you're in, so. Yeah, fair one. Uh, Mr. Clab, see you later. Thanks for coming on. Um, where are we at now then? So how strong do you have to be to make it to phase one training at Purbright? I mean, the new fitness assessment that's coming in, in its own right, is different. There needs to be some sort of strength work now. But I must say, I'm, and a lot of people ask me about this, I've not asked Matt Smith on his views on the um, on the new fitness assessment, but I'm actually over the moon that the military's changed and gone away from running. I am a big mm -hmm. runner. I run an absolute lot, and I love running. I mean, it's my biggest hobby, but I just don't, I don't think, and I know what your thoughts are on this, Matt Smith, I just don't think it relates to what a soldier does. And I've always been big into... You train how you're going to fight, and you fight how you're going to train. You know, yeah. it's hand in hand, mate. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Like, the, the Canadian Forces Fitness Test is transitioned very far away from what we used to do in the Brits, too. So the PFT, we did the mile and a half, the push-ups, uh, as we used to call them, press-ups. I say press-ups in Canada. No one knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, what's, yeah. A, what's a what's press-up? It? It's American, push isn't it? And it's like, what's exactly. a push-up, mate? You bloody exactly. Hell. You push up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying, mate. I know yeah. what you're saying. So then you you know you do push-ups, you sit-ups, and then that's that would be your assessment, right? 
And we never did, well, in the Remi, we do CFTs, but not as much as, you know, as, as obviously infantry and stuff like that. Nowadays, for the Canadians, they've stepped away from the, the cardiovascular fitness assessment. It's more the ergonomics, the, 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 like being able to lift things in a specific manner yeah. to do the right lift or getting up and down from the prone because that's what you're doing in a section attack. In a section attack, you're not running with runners or, or trainers Agreed. for a mile and a half, just jogging along nice and happy. And when on a CFT, yeah, okay, you, you got your tabbing on, you go off, you go, but it's still not relevant to what you're doing. Because let's be honest, most of the time you're not tabbing in unless you, you know, the infantry. You're not tabbing into the battlefield. You're going to be in a vehicle dropped off. Then you're going to be going straight into a contact, up, down, up, down, left, right, climbing over a wall. Yeah. You know, whatever else may be. That's what I like to see. And I did see uh, on YouTube the, I didn't see the specifics, but what they're trying to, do, you know, actually jumping up on stuff and, and lifting stuff up in a specific manner. I know they did the. Um, they had those big old sandbags that were lifting yeah. on top. That's the same sort of thing we do yeah. in the Canadians. We have a couple of sandbags we have to lift above a certain height in a timed period of casualty drag. That's awesome. A casualty drag should be a, a clear assessment for Definitely. anyone doing PT. So I, sure. am, I was meant to do it yesterday, but the PTI um, under the weather. So I'm going to do it next weekend. So I'm going to do the test, record it, mate. But I totally agree with what you're saying there. It just re it just relates things to what you do for real. That's not to exactly. say that I don't think that PFA is good, because I do, because it's a good test of cardiovascular. I mean, yes. you know yourself, stand by, go, and it's an absolute <sighs> trying to get to, yeah. the, uh, to the finish line as quick as you can uh, yeah. in the required time. So it, it is good. I just It just doesn't relate. So you don't run into battle with trainers. It's simple no. as that. I mean, no, exactly. the Marine Commandos do it well. They run in boots and in exactly. combat. I think that's exactly. good. Um, yeah. It's just, yeah, it, it's one of those. Um, amazing, my two favourite army YouTubers. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Uh, don't know about the food, but I know the first haircut is a freebie. Yeah, it is a freebie. I yeah. definitely remember that. <laughs> See you later, hair. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, Brody says, what rank is Maximus? Right now, I am a gunner in the Canadian artillery. So uh, I guess what would you classify as a private? So the lowest rank right now, um, you know, I'm trying my best to transition back up to my rank in the British Army, which was corporal. Um, so master corporal in in, uh, in the Canadian Army. We have a different, little bit different the way we name our structure. Um, <clears throat> right now, I'm on a promotional course called PLQ, which is primary leadership qualification. Uh, Smudge has done um, the same detail to get his full screw or corporal in, in his career, and I did it in my British Army career. Unfortunately, I have to, I'm redoing the course because it's diff different military and things are a little different. Uh, so I'm doing that course within the next, well, two weeks. I'm doing module of three, so it's split into four modules. Uh, three and four is more sort of the field and combat training exercises. Um, and then once I qualify for PLQ or primary leadership qualification, I can be promoted to the rank of um, master bombardier. Now, I can't be a master bombardier or a full corporal in the British Army until I do some other prerequisite courses. So as a gunner in the artillery, you cannot be in charge of a gun line or a gun position unless you've done a gun debt 2IC course. What that basically means is that if the gunner, uh, sorry, if the um, gun back commander in charge of that gun or the gun IC is man down, shot, killed, whatever it may be, I'm going on detail, someone needs to be able to take over that gun. If you're a master bombardier or a corporal, you're technically in charge of a section, right? So if you're a section commander, if you don't know how to look after the gun, you can't do your job. So although I've done my leadership qualification, I also have to do a gunnery qualification. So right now I'm just a gunner, but hopefully in the near future, a couple of years or so, I'll be getting back up to the rank where I was at. So, so there you go. And, and, and really, these are the things, the old expectation management that people need to think about when, you know, yes. changing armies, especially countries. Yeah. I mean, uh, so, you know, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Um, we had another good one here. Where is it? Any new guns, Maximus? And have you been the gun range? <laughs> uh, the only new, I guess, well, this isn't really a true gun because I'm using this one. And Smudge, I think I'm going to try and bring you in on this one, buddy, because I think it'll be a little fun. We should plan it for the near future or the far future. I don't know if you've heard, but I was going to do a live stream, charity live stream, um, rifle drill. I was going to do rifle drill for 12 hours. Yeah. Um, and all the money that was made on that live stream was super chats via um, that live stream was going to go to the big guy in the back. Um, so something I think we can definitely work with together in the future for the charity. You know, I'm always down for the charities, especially help for heroes. Um, that's, I guess, the newest gun. But any real guns, the latest one was my uh, Derya Mark 12. I did a video on it recently. It's a semi automatic shotgun. 
hell of a blast. And if one day, Smudge, you, you know this, you're more than welcome to come down and take yes, a blast, mate, buddy, yeah. when you come over to Canada. So, 100% definitely look at that. So there you go in terms of his guns. Um, <laughs> somebody mentioned it earlier on. What, what weapon system have the Canadians got and how, how does it differ from the SA-80? What do you like more, the SA-80 or the Canadian rifle? Yeah, so it's a question that gets asked to me a lot. Um, honestly, I will always stay true to my L85. A lot of people will laugh when they hear me say that. And it's not its not about the weapons platform itself. It's just like any tool, okay? Some people will build something with a hammer one way and a wrench the other way. I like using a bullpup rifle because that's what my body, since I was technically in the cadets, 12 years old, yeah. used to doing. So from 12 into the age of 23, 22, however old it was when I left, I was used to a bullpup rifle. Everything tucked into my body, nice and tight, could transition left and right, however I wanted to go inside of a vehicle. It was beautiful, short, stubby little rifle, still the extended barrel for the range, and I had lots of flexibility. Did it have stoppages? Yes, any rifle has stoppages. I can tell you that firsthand using the C7, um, but it would just felt better ergonomically. Yeah. Now, does that make it a better rifle than the C7? Of course not. And does it make it any worse of a rifle? Of course not. But it's just what makes you feel comfortable. I hold the C7 rifle, uh, which is the C7A2. When I hold it, I'm holding an AR-15, and it's a long barreled rifle. You're hanging a lot of that empty load out the front. It's a 20-inch bull barrel, so you know it's not like your 16-inch low-profile barrel. It's come in a little bit more. It's a lot longer. There's a lot of weight on the front end when, you, when you're standing. So my personal preference would be the L85. Just because I'm used to it, it, it just it feels more comfortable yeah. in my body. So There's a lot of things I've changed with that L85, but then in changing it, you change the dynamics and how it fires. I mean, there's a reason exactly. why it's heavy. And yes, everybody exactly. Everybody talks about this every time, as you know, the, yeah. the heaviness of the weapon system. But after a while, you get used to it. I mean, you, I can remember when I first joined, having two hands on the weapon and running was emotional. Uh, now yeah. it's just like, well... I'm a professional soldier, it's there, it sits right, you know, you yeah. have a sling on it, but, you know, if you were to make that a proper, a properly light weapon compared to the C7, the C8, the DeMarco, um, I'm exactly. not too sure it would be the weapon that it, it is, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, like, I've, I've owned, in, in my civi, civi firearms collection, I used to own a Tavor. Um, the Tavor is an absolutely beautiful bullpup rifle. Everybody loves to hate bullpups and i don't know why I, I get some of their mentality but they just hate them just because they think that they're terrible until they've actually held and, and the funny thing is whenever i ask someone have you ever held a bullpup you ever shot a bullpup yeah no well then how on earth do you expect to call out people for it being good or bad but the tavor they got it right if the tavor was you know the british equivalent sa80 beautiful yeah. it's just beautiful ambidextrous and that's the big hitter really you, you know this is the big hitter is lefties Right, the South Paws using the old uh, L85. They're not having a, a good day. I'm, I was blessed to be right-handed. No offense to the lefties, but when using that rifle in the British Army, if you're lefties, it, it's not a good time. You know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more with that. That's not to say you can't fire it because you absolutely no. can. But it's yeah. the the fact of the matter is, is that clearly when the working parts come back, you're definitely getting pinged one if you're not pointing it down to the right, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> there's, yeah, exactly. there's obviously lots of things in it, but. Again, you know, you can only piss with the willy you've got, or you can only piss with the yeah. uh, uh, the vagina that you've got, and, and that's just yeah. that's just the that's just the way it is. You know, it is yeah, exactly. It is, but, um, but that's an interesting question. Thanks very much for asking that, guys. Get them likes up. Thanks, Mr. Collab. What province is he in? Canada is beautiful. I am in Alberta right now, um, and I absolutely love Alberta. The interesting thing is, I just came back from uh, Ontario. I was in Niagara Falls. Um, totally different different environment for sure. It's, it's just as beautiful there, but uh, the prairies or where I live in Alberta, it's dry, it's flat, as much knows being in Suffield uh, in, in the provinces here. Uh, it's dry, it's, it's cold in the winter, and it's uh, hot in the summers. It's, it's actually classified, certain areas of where we are, where I live is classified as a desert. Yeah. A lot of people will laugh when I say that, but it is. It has the exact same properties. If you were to look in the dictionary as to what a desert is, the area where I is, is is just like that. So. Yeah, um, I can definitely vouch for, for the words of the famous Maximus on that one. Um, <laughs> from this time that I've spent on the prairie, that's for bloody sure. Um, so yeah, no fair one. Dino, how's it going, pal? 
Uh, is the army fun? Yeah, absolutely. Every day is a completely different day. I'm sure that would be the same for Maximus in the reserves in the Canadian army, which we haven't really spoke too much about the Canadian military. Um, different to the British army, mate? Totally. Um, well, I wouldn't say totally. It's, it's, it's a tough mix between what's the exact same and what's completely different. You've got to remember that the Canadian army and the military was primarily, I say this very carefully because I've got to be careful what I say, um, due to my own limitations, the Canadian army has been primarily focused on British army culture and British army doctrine. So a lot of the things are the exact same. The way we do our drill is almost the same. The way we do our, you know, discipline and all those sort of things, they're all the same sort of way. The rank structure is pretty much identical. Yeah. A couple of differences. Um, so it's, it's a, it's funny because when I transition to the Canadian army, you, you think, oh, this is going to be too difficult, or maybe it's going to be completely the opposite. And it was the hardest part was it was the same, but not the same. So you think you're doing everything right because you, you see them doing it and you're like, oh, that's not the way you do that bit. And you're like, but we just, but that's what we used to do. And you were doing the exact same. Oh, well, we do this timing a little different. So it's the little indiscrepancies you wouldn't know that kind of threw you off. I mean, even doing weapon handling, um, although we've changed to more of an operator style handling stuff now. Yeah. Um, the weapon handling is the exact same process as the L85. So it was nice. I didn't have to worry about, you know, what do I do next? It's all the same, you know, safety catch, cock hook, look, seven point check, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All the exact same stuff. So it's, it's, it's definitely a different mentality. Um, you know, I feel being a British veteran in, in a Canadian military world, you see the differences of the way people react to one another, to humor, you know, the sense of humor is a little darker, I think, on the British side. I think from a military culture worldwide, that's changing, you know, me and Smudge already had a bit of a discussion about it, but it's definitely changing, you know. But overall, you know, very similar. Very, very similar overall. So how about, how about in terms of professionalism? Now, I can't speak about this, and, and I'll, I'll divulge and I'll go into a little bit more detail when I say this, but, I mean, when I went through training, mate, all I knew was that the British Army is the best in, world, in the world. That's all I knew. Yeah. So when I, you know, in, in a sense you could say I was brainwashed like the Americans get brainwashed uh, yeah. in terms of America is great, blah, blah, blah. So that's all I knew. Don't get me wrong, I still I still believe that to this day, but I'm also very aware of the things that happen in the military. You know, you see stupid things, but, but right. you don't see the level that you see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I hear what you're saying. Like, uh, And I was on the same mentality, and I still believe it to this day that the British Army is one of the most professional armies in the world. It, 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 the funny thing is, I'm, I'm sure you've been asked this question a million times, Smudge, which army's better? This one or this one? Which regiment's yeah. better? This one or this one? It's an impossible question to ask because yeah. it's so specific. Canada's military, and once again, I've got to be careful how I speak to this, but Canada's military is tailored to specific taskings, just like the British Army and the Armed Forces is. You've got to remember that our, our army's smaller, right? And therefore, we don't have the capability to do more things than, say, other militaries do. Does that make us any less professional? Absolutely not. And relating specifically to professionalism, yeah. I would say pretty much bang on par with the Brits, mate. The, oh, yeah, exactly the same. And, and that's good because when it comes to serving alongside Brits or Canadians, we're very similar. You know, we can get, we're, we're very quick to connect. You know, we have the same military ethos, the same military style, because as I mentioned, most of the Canadian military doctrine, tactics, culture was formed from the British Army. So Yeah, which has been majority of militaries in, around the world, to be fair. Um, right. I mean, going back to clearly the colonised type days, the colonial days, you know, I mean, Canada still comes as a, under sovereignty and under the under the Queen, doesn't it? Um, exactly. You know, which is great. It's fantastic. I mean, they are very patriotic over there towards the Queen, aren't they? Yes. Well, it, it's tough to say. I, sometimes I get a mixed reaction. Sometimes, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I don't have much interest in, you know, the monarchy and stuff like that. The other side, a lot of people are, but it's... The culture, again, it's Canada is a huge country. Yeah. We have a lot of land mass. Yeah. And the further you get away from certain areas, the, the cultures change, right? People have different mindsets of, you know, the monarchy, and it yeah. changes between where you are. I think in Alberta, primar predominantly, we're, we're pretty happy to have the Queen still as part of, you know, the, the culture and the lifestyle we have here. But, yeah. uh, you know, other areas, it's a little bit different opinion. Yeah, so. fair one. Um, okay, moving on. I'll start trying on the 16th of June. I'm not weak, but I'm not a big lad. 
to how much of a struggle is training going to be, are you carrying kit and so on, I can only really go back to my previous experience, and I'm sure Maximus will have the same uh, point of view. So I was pretty much the same. Um, 16 years old, hadn't really done much fitness, and if there's one thing that I could always say, get out there and start tabbing. Because yeah. I didn't look at that when I was young. I just looked at doing that PFA. That was my immediate danger. I need to pass that PFA. Um, mm -hmm. And I struggled when it came to that, that tabby Maximus. I don't know about you. Yeah, I mean, the cadets was... I mean, a lot of people laugh at me when I sort of reference the cadets. But like like I said, I wouldn't be where I was today, I think, without the cadets. Because I was a little brat when I was younger. Going to the cadets, you know, it, it brought me into where I was today. But tabbing and, and getting a ruck on your shoulder or getting a pack or, and webbing... In the cadets when i was young got my body and my brain used to okay well i'm not just wearing a school bag to school today i'm carrying a lot of extra gear my yeah. body took a few years to get adjusted to that yeah. and by the time i was about 15 16 i could safely say that i knew what a pair of boots felt like on my feet i knew what a rock and webbing was like on my back so i could i, I knew my limitations and that's something i think when you're preparing to do fitness going in know your limitations and i've had so many people ask me what should i do to get fit to join um start small don't overdo it take your time you know buy a pair of boots that you know are going to be very similar to the ones you're getting or the exact same i'm sure what do you get like, issued now smudge yeah uh, for... we get um believe it or not we get accus mate really yeah yeah but wow they're, they're not up to the quality um because they're mass-produced, mate, so already right. that, that will give you the idea as to what type of quality they're going to be. But right. to be fair, I've not worn the Akus that have been issued. I'm that type of person. Um, I right. buy my own boots. But from the low, from the feed of the general feed of um, rule of thumb of what people are saying, they're good. Yeah, yeah, um, that's nice. Yeah, and I mean, clearly they're, an, uh, they're, a, they're, a, they're a mile away from what we used to get issued, mate, the old Combat 95 poo, uh, which, to be fair, once they've, I, been, once they've been broken in, they were a fantastic boot. I loved them. I loved them. Everybody complained, or a lot of people complained about them. I never had one problem I sold, guys. Not one. Brilliant boot. So. Uh, so somebody says here, RSM Miles says, Maximus, what rank were you in the cadets? <laughs> Uh, I was a lance jack, I think, back then. I, I didn't I didn't progress quick, and that was fine. I was quite happy being in the lower ranks. Do you know, it's funny. A lot of people talk about the cadets, you know, especially joining up. Oh, do cadets get a hard time? Did you get a hard time? No, oh, keep your mouth quiet. Remember that if you're a cadet, you know nothing. You think you know everything. You know nothing. If you think you do, and even if you do know something, you know nothing. So when you get to training, mm. keep your mouth shut. I don't care if you're an RSM cadet. Or a brand new cadet, you weren't in cadets in my eyes. Yeah. When they ask you if you're in the cadets, be honest because they're going to ask you that. Be honest, yes, sergeant, yes, corporal, I was in the cadets. That's where it ends. It stops right there. If you go back when you're in basic training, you go back to the shacks or back to the block, back to your, your rooms, and you start giving it the big licks about how you know how to do section attacks and how you know how to do this, you're going to get sadly burnt. And I really, that's a big bit of advice I like to give again to, to troops going in is if you're a cadet keep it yourself be proud of what you did because it's a good program to be in but remember that you know nothing you may yeah. think you do but you know nothing listen to what you've been taught be a sponge and keep your mouth shut no one wants to listen to biggie big licks going yeah. meow, meow, it's, cadet. Yeah. it's just not a good environment yeah, to be help in. people out use that experience yes um, yes definitely you know because there is so I mean I wasn't a cadet but there is so much experience that the cadets do get Yep. Uh, you, I mean, you could talk about that clearly because you've been in the cadets, but yeah. you, you know, you touch a weapon system, you handle a weapon system. So exactly. already, in a sense, you're at a better standard than most people entering the service. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. Like, it's uh, the program's fantastic. Over here in Canada, it's a completely different program. Very, very low key. We don't touch rifles. You don't get rifles. You get air rifles. So yeah. the Brit cadets... You're all very lucky. So yeah, no, I, I totally lucky. agree on that one. It's funny yeah. you mention that and say that. But people for a long time have been tr have been trying to close down Harrogate. You know, do you know that? What? Yeah, Why? yeah. Because in 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 theory, what they say is is that the British Army are, ch are, ch are training children. Child soldiers, yeah. yeah. Um, and I partly understand that. I, I can partly understand and see the direction that they're coming from. But then on the flip side of that is. 
going through it and understanding it and, and, and also knowing what the British Army is about. I mean, listen, I've been in now 15 years. So mm -hmm. in the 15 years I went from Harrogate and through, that is an abs that's a career. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. Career. And the things that I've been taught, the way, I mean, you know, and we're not talking about, um, you know, child soldiers from like, I don't know, the countries that are out there that just get people up, uh, and, well, off you go, mate, there's a weapon. You know, this is completely exactly. different. Yeah. You know. No, um, I, I agree. I totally agree. And, um, you know, Harrogate is, it, it's the complete opposite of that, really, isn't it? It's just the total opposite of what people think cadets or, and soldiers do from a young age it's the complete opposite it brings everything you could expect from a young adult that trust that respect that ownership that responsibility everything is thrown at you it's thrown at you hard and fast and almost you know thrown down your throat yeah. but it's good and it, it's a wake-up call and i wish you know people would realize that it's not about training people to kill of course that's inherently what the army's job is to do but it's so much more than that even if you did Harrogate and never went to a battalion, never got deployed, did Harrogate for a year and quit, right? If that was a program if, and, and someone told me, would you pay an extra tax dollars to allow these kids to do this program free for a year? Hell yes, I would. Hell damn yes, I would. For sure. Um, I, I couldn't agree more with you on that one, to be honest with you. Uh, it, it, it changes people's mindsets. Uh, yeah. and, and a lot of people talk about, oh, you, you should bring in... Um, national service again and I totally disagree with that I can understand yeah. why they say it at the end of the day yep. the British Army is a professional organisation and it wants yep. people to join not because of national service but because exactly. you want to join the military um, yeah. and, and that's the type of people that it wants to target and hence mm -hmm. why it's professional you know yep. uh, did you find phase one difficult I did and I didn't. It, just certain things, really, um, and 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 that would be the same for Maximus, to be fair. Yeah, I, I would agree. It's 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 supposed to be difficult, right? You're joining, like you said, professional force. They're not going to make it easy. If they made it easy, you know, they give you a, a lollipop at the end of it, right? You you're there to be part of a professional force. You're going to get tested. You're going to get challenged. But that's what makes you a, a better person coming out of it. Yeah. it. It is challenging and it's a good thing to be challenged. If you were to go into it and be in your comfort zone throughout of it, I'm sure Smudge will agree with me. I would not want you beside me going into a combat zone, knowing that you've never been challenged, knowing you've never hit that brick wall in, in fitness or, or in, in mental capacity. You need to be challenged. It's going to be hard, but you're going to come out of it the other end, tougher, better as a person. So don't be scared of it. Like, reap the benefits from it. That's what it's there for. Uh, opinion on the new season of Game of Thrones? Wowzers. Uh, that's all I can say about that one. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, oh, it's Sunday for me now, so I'm all looking forward to tonight. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, and I'm not going to lie to you, but, like, when I, when I watch the first piece and, you know, you, the, uh, is it, I can't think what the dragon's called, but Aragorn, whatever the dragon's called, and it starts blowing at the Night King, I'm like, yes, yes, uh, and then he comes up like, no, no, uh, there was, there was loads of things dying, and, you know, yeah, yeah I was, yeah. I was full of my, uh, British Army aggression, and, oh, <laughs> like, I was there, uh, that was, yeah, that was an absolute interesting piece, oh, yeah. Kevin Drake's on. How's it going, Drakey lads? Drakey, um, bud. How's it going, pal? Why did you settle in Canada? That's from Drakey, that. Why did I settle in Canada? A very common question. Um, as I mentioned, prior to leaving the army, I had no interest in settling in the UK. It's not that I don't love my country. I'm a proud British patriot. A lot of people disagree with that because I moved here. That's their own prerogative. But uh, I couldn't see myself raising a family in the UK comfortably. Could I do it? Probably. Would I be happy? Probably not. Uh, I lived in a very rough part of town where I was in. Um, I wasn't enjoying it. And I said, you know what, I need to get out of here. I need to go somewhere else. I saw Canada. I saw a training opportunity there. I went there posting for two years. And I said, you know what, this is like, it was like a nest. It was like a nest without the eggs in it. I was like, I'm ready to go. I want to, you know, and I wanted kids. I saw this is the perfect nest. And that's what I said. I said, now is my perfect opportunity to get out of the army. Um, and Canada was the place to go. It's just got everything going for it, and that's pretty much the main reason why I, why I came here. So. Fair one. Uh, I, I, from being there, I can see why. I mean, we spoke about it earlier on that they they're similar to the Americans. They they do things in big, in big things, don't they? Uh, yeah. Especially when we spoke about McDonald's. I mean, they're large. <laughs> their their medium is like a large for us. It's, it's yeah. mental. Um, yeah. So it, it's massively good. That's for sure. I do I do like Canada. Uh, and if 
I think if I could get my wife, would I go over there? I think I would. Uh, there's a few places I'd like to go. Um, mm-hmm. Did you find phase? What we've already, I've already answered that. What else have we got? Uh, what speed is a six mile tub like in phase one? So it's 15 minute miles. Uh, that's the basic average for a, uh, a soldier slash infantry soldier. Um, 15 minute miles, base average. Yes, they do speed it up in parts depending on, uh, so, for, so for, for an example now, if you're on a flat for the first two miles, they'll do a lot of shuffling. They'll, they'll, they'll go a bit faster due to the fact that if the next, the other two miles is uphill, it, you're, you're then going outside the 15 minute mile. So, it, you know, you're coming banging on the on the, 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 the desired hour, so to speak. So, but um, it's all done for a reason. And like I said, yeah, one thing I would do looking back on it is do more tabbing. Because uh, I yes. found that quite difficult in, in training from a 16 year old perspective. Yeah, I would agree. Tabbing's a big one, for sure. How long does the medical at selection take? Not long. I think I was in there for about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, if that. It wasn't It wasn't long, was it? A few questions, a couple yeah. of checks here and there, drop your pants, cough. <laughs> That's uh, it. Yeah, there was, um, yeah, it wasn't long, to be honest with you. Um, I was very nervous, especially for the I fact was. that people were like, you've got to drop your pants. I'm like, oh. Well, I'm not dropping my pants. I don't want a female that, that you know, is she, you know, there are, there was loads of things. Yeah, uh, yeah. What did you think of the advertising that came out at the beginning of the year? What was what was that in relation to, Nathan? Um, are you on about the, the, the military adverts, uh, the snowflake type thing? I don't really have an opinion on this. I think it's very easy for me to be able to sit here and say, well, we... Uh, the, this, I see this in relation to when I first joined Harrogate, we didn't have mobile phones. Now there's mobile phones for recruits. So it's different. We live in a different world, a different era. This is not my era anymore. This is people that are joining mm-hmm. up era. So yeah. it's very easy for me to say, well, I don't, I don't like that. Uh, you know, that is my opinion. I'm not giving an opinion on that. I'm just saying that it's, it's not really something that I can comment. By yeah. all accounts... It's doing very well. I mean, the Canadian Army doing that. Have they got similar to the same? Um, I, I'll definitely agree with you and, and kind of come off what Smudge is saying there. It's not something I can comment on. You know, even if I wanted to, I'm not going to. Um, is it right or wrong? A lot of people have their opinions on it. Personally, I think whatever's trying to get someone into the military is a good thing. Whether it be, if you don't agree with it, fair enough. Are they trying? Yes, they are. And to me, that's the most important part. Um, it may not be the greatest commercial in the world or the perfect commercial in the world, but it's still a commercial. Yeah. I think in Canada, we don't have as much. Honestly, I don't, I don't watch much TV, so I wouldn't even know. The only TV I watch is in the bar, maybe once and then when I'm having a beer, looking on the TV, watching the hockey. Um, but I don't see commercials on TV, so I don't really see much of the promotional side from our side. But uh, I know we are actively, you know, recruiting and, and they put, you know, posters out and all that sort of stuff. But Honestly, I don't think we have much influence on, on commercials in our, or adverts in our place. So Yeah, fair one. Um, I'm joining the Army in September. Well, fantastic news. Um, I'm going to Harrogate. Anything I should know. We, we, we spoke about this a little while ago, myself and Maximus. Just, um, if you're in the cadets, don't really mention the cadets unless asked. Be very humble. Um, enjoy yourself. Looking back on it now, it went absolutely rapid, but at the time it didn't. Um, and just just learn from your mistakes is one thing that I would definitely say from experience. It, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think I did that as well as I as I could have. Uh, and and always be proactive. Uh, don't be reactive. Uh, and and when you're sitting there, which I, I definitely did this myself, when you're sitting there, you could be doing something else. There's Bingo. So, so many things to be, <laughs> that you could be getting on with. Is my locker good? Um, yeah. You know, question yourself. Right, I've just done my lockout. It took me 15 minutes. Really? 15 minutes? Exactly. You know, I, Maximus is totally agreeing with this. I, mean, I, I, I could... won. That's probably the best bit of advice that anyone could give for Harrogate. And you I nailed it on the head. Be proactive. If you're sat there eating Harry Bows on your bed <laughs> and everybody else is still vacuuming and cleaning and making sure their T-shirts are pressed and pulling their boots you should be doing the same. And if you're not doing it because you think all your stuff's good, well, guess what? You should be helping other people yeah. not sat there. So be proactive. That's, yes, that's, honestly, I would say that the best bit of advice for going into any training establishment or even just going into your regiment. Yeah. Be proactive. And it's a big mentality I have here. 
I even tried trained, uh, you know, I, I talked to some of the guys in um, the cadets that we, we, I try help train cadets in Canada here too. And I teach them like, it's okay, so your tent's up, it's minus 20 out. What can you be doing? Well, we could go to bed. Well, not quite yet. We've got a number of things we need to do yet. Be pro Look for the next thing you need to do. Yeah. Don't just be like, okay, done. I'll uh, let's go and chill for now. No, what's next? And, you know, obviously have a rest. But, yeah, that's perfect bit of advice there. So be proactive is a big one. Big um, one. Drakey says, I'm good. Thanks. Good stream. Thanks very much, dude. It's good to have you on, as always. Thanks, Drakey. Uh, Great British Gamer, how many kg is the equipment on the six mile tub? Um, I think, don't quote me on this, but I believe it's the it's it's the CFT weights. They they build you up steadily. So for like the first mile, you, I'm, I'm, I can't remember. I think you had like something like ten kilograms in your, in yeah. your kit, wasn't it? That or, or the yeah. first proper tab you do, and you don't have anything. It's just a walk. Uh, then you then have kits. They, they slowly build you up. It's like scaffolding. Um, it's like you're going to do on the outside of a house. The first thing you do is put the scaffolding up, uh, and you work your you work your way up until by then you, you instead of walking on a running machine, you're absolutely full on sprinting. Um, yeah. And and that's all I can say to you. You know they don't break you. They they walk you. They give you the tools. Uh, the medical itself doesn't take long, but you'll be waiting around for a long time. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely relate to that. Jesus. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, that took ages. How? How are you both doing? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, doing good, doing good. Uh, when you say drop your pants, do you mean like actually underwear or just trousers? No, like literally underwear, trousers, the lot. Drop it yep. and show what you've got underneath. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and get used to it because you're going to training or basic, yeah. you're going to be in a shower with yeah. 20 blokes. We don't care, guys, okay? We're in the same military yeah, we have a laugh, but, you know, human, we're good human beings, you know, just get on with it. You know, if you're too shy to go into a shower, you've got to think about what you're going into. You're going into the army, you're going into the armed forces. Get over it. Yeah, okay, agreed. Get over it. Agreed. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, LV, were you in the... Uh, LV says, MK, were you in the cadets? I wasn't, pal. No, it's not something I was in. Uh, Matsimus was, though. Uh, Ross Gaming, hi, how's it going? What's the point in having to drop and cough? I don't know. It's uh, there's got obviously a point to it because they wouldn't make you do that for no reason. It, it's by a doctor, so that there is something to do with it. I'm not. Do you know? Do you know what it is, Maximus? Or I think it's something to do with your prostate. I think when you cough, your muscles tense up. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a doctor. I, yeah, I don't know. That's something yeah. I can ask the the medical officer when I interview him uh, in the upcoming uh, month. I've got selection at Litchfield in the theatre for this month. Good luck on that. That's where I went yeah, for luck. my selection, uh, was Litchfield. Opinion on the vegan sausage rolls from Grex. I've not, I've not <laughs> tried them. Uh, and I don't think uh, Maximus has either by the, uh, by the laugh that he pushed out then. Um, Maximus, what do you think of the UK cutting the tank numbers by almost half? And what do you think of the Royal Tank Regiment? That's a good question. That's a good question. Um, you know, when we when we border on the lines of cut, cutting and money, and, and it always comes down to government and politics. And unfortunately, I can't make can't make comment on that due to my own limitations of the Canadian Armed Forces. What I will say is, you know, I love my tanks. I've served alongside them um, in the Remi, repairing them, fixing them, fighting alongside them for you know eight years. So I'm, I'm pretty confident to say that I love tanks. Um, and knowing that the British Army is losing tanks is, is sad. Um, but clearly that money is going to get restructured for something potentially even more important, you know, more specialized roles. Yes. Do we need tanks? Of course we do. We'll always need tanks on the battlefield, but, uh, you know, times are changing. We're, we're changing the way we fight yeah. in the Canadian military. Yeah. Things change, you know, yeah, I mean, um, and the, and the RTR, the RTR is an, it's, it's, it's an amazing regiment. I was with them in Valley for close to two years. I think it was great unit. Yeah. You bang on there. The, 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 the battle perspectives and, and the way we battle is, is changing. Tanks mm. aren't really on the battlefield anymore. They're not really being used. They, no. they were used in Afghanistan because, well, we've got a tank. Um, and the perspective, a lot of fighting these days is fibula. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the complex, complex and... That's a complex terrain that we're fighting in. Um, so that's just the way it is. The army needs to be very mindful about this. It needs to have a lot of foresight. It needs to change. Uh, but also, yes, we're in a sense restructuring our tanks. We're going from a, 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 a whatever number it is to a shorter number. But they'll, they'll reinvest that. I do believe from 
uh, one of the videos that I've seen on Matsumas is, is that they're, they're, there's new upgrades coming on the Challenger, which is fantastic. Yep. I mean, it's already an absolute beast of a tank as it is. The fact that they're going to put more things on just tells me that they're um, that they're investing a lot of money in, into an already capable tank, uh, exactly. and one of the best in the world. So that's that's brilliant. Uh, the, We've done this in the past. We did this in World War One and World War Two. We we had a sh we had a, a number amount of uh, tanks. Something kicked off, and then the funding got pushed up, and then we got loads of tanks. So mm -hmm. you, you're only going to play to the needs of, of what you need to do. And, and currently, at present, you know, there's what 150 tanks that we have. Do we need 150 tanks really? Um, I mean, that's not for me to make that decision. I can only comment on that and, and, and think about as to reasons as, as why they're doing it. But I do know that one thing's for sure is what what Maximus says now is the, the tank is in a formidable bit of kit, that, that Challenger. It really is. Uh, I've been up and close and personal with it. I wouldn't want to be the want to be on the end of that 120 mil. That's for sure. No, 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 no. Uh, no, no, no. Especially with the 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 professional soldiers, uh, the tankies that are in it as well. Um, they don't mess around. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, uh, good question though. Thanks for asking that. Um, thank you for asking that. A lot of people have been uh, have been asking it. To be fair, I'm going to be there in 48 weeks. Well, Jack, good luck on that. Uh, I hope you enjoy um, Harrogate like I did, pal, and uh, Maximus. Yeah. Uh, where are we at? I'm joining the Royal Engineers as a plant top. Well, that's nice. Different. Uh, you're going to get some nice quals out of that, though. That's for sure. Mm. Um, where are we looking? What are tank crewmen like, specifically Challenger 2 crews? I really couldn't comment on that. I think that's definitely for Maximus to, to roll with. Um, I guess define as to what they're like. But, I mean, they're just like any British soldier, right? Professional. Um, have a good laugh. You know, we like to have some banter. If you don't know what banter is, uh, look it up. It's basically, you know, having, having a laugh, having a crack on with each other. Um, you know, tank crews live in a very tight-knit world. If you've seen tank movies, you know what I mean. You're in a box with four guys. Um, you know, sometimes, depending on what vehicle you're in, three guys. It's a, it's a tight, close-knit community as a family. You're a family inside of a tank. And, you know, I was a crewman of not a tank, but of, of a repair vehicle, the same crew members, right? We had three people. You're a very tight, close-knit team in that tank, and you look after one another. And they have a very close bond that's just like that of an infantryman in their section or in their, in their battle buddy or battle partners. Um, with the tank, the tank is also part of that family. You look after it all the time, and you'll... You'll hear a lot of people say in, in tank regiments, you know, like their vehicle is almost like their home. It's very true. It is their home. That's why. Yeah. Um, so they're very protective over it. You know, I've seen people get very upset when, uh, you know, when visitors are doing tours of facilities and they climb all over their tank and, and opening hatches and stuff like, hold on a second, mate. Like, that's my vehicle there. Like, chill out a little bit. So, you know, tank regiments have uh, have a lot of pride in what they do and they're, they're, they're proud in, in looking after their vehicle and staying as a crew. So... I mean, they the name it for crying out loud, so, uh, exactly. so, so there you go. Um, yeah. I totally get what you're saying there in that regard. I mean, it's, <laughs> oh, it's a fantastic bit of kit, that, uh, that, um, that, that wagon is. I'm going to send some coffee over to you, uh, a bit of Bravo Company coffee, mate. Oh, brilliant, mate. Yes, Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to look at sending that. So I've got some Bravo Company coffee. For those of you who aren't aware, I'm sponsored by Bravo Company coffee, guys. Um, nice. There will be some giveaways, but um, I'm going to send some over so uh, Maximum, Maximus can tickle his little lip with a bit of Bravo <laughs> Company coffee, keep it British and all that good stuff. Um, Definitely. Yeah, and, uh, and and get that sent over for him with probably a mug as well if some mugs come. So he's got a nice little mug there. So uh, Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that, it. That'll be a bit of a nice incentive uh, for, <laughs> for, for jumping on and saying thanks very much, really. Guys, sure. we've hit that yeah. one hour. Maximus only wanted to do 45, so I've strung him along for a uh, for, for an absolute <laughs> long period there. Thanks very much, as always, Maximus, for jumping on. Uh, this is an absolute pleasure for me, mate. Um, I've been bloody pestering you for absolutely weeks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's been good, mate. We should look at doing it again soon. I hope, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, for some of you that uh, I haven't, we haven't been able to answer your uh, uh, questions, really sorry about that, but you know, I try and answer all of them, but unfortunately you, you can never get all of them, and um, Maximus is what, it's what, three, four o'clock your time, mate? It's five in the morning. There you go, he's not been asleep, so thank you very much for jumping on, thank you very much Anytime. for not going to sleep. Uh, guys, 
as always it's an absolute pleasure uh, for jumping on if you're new please subscribe and please give a thumbs up and please go and check out maximus if you uh, if you're not already uh, subscribed to him um, he does some fantastic uh, um, fantastic commentary i was going to say partly that but also he does some fantastic views on all things military um so go and check that out massively different to me but he's he's got me hooked that's for sure with some of the things he does but guys thanks very much uh, look forward to seeing you all on the next stream. Take care.